Mm. I think it's just because I'm looking at what's been going on over the last, well, last year in particular, especially what was like Netflix and stuff, I'm wondering whether, you know, what whether this whole shift is going to have like a bigger impact in music than it was. I, I, well, but, where like, music is of, concerned, yeah. we've gotten into a bit of a, well, it's been going on for quite a few years, even since our parents were our age. Mm. Um, we've got this cycle of it looks like things all start getting different and then they don't mm -hmm. and it gets so frustrating because you just think why is this the case why are people not actually doing more to facilitate a change I, and i think I, it's just yeah. because it's not just the musicians that are just the same constantly it's the record producers and everything like that they're just um i'd say it's also uh people who sort of they're, they're, they're in their 20s and they get into this industry and they're like i'm going to change everything and then they get to their 30s their 40s and they're like well i, okay, I kind of like something. what i've got mm. you know and well, besides that, that it's the whole society isn't it yeah I, th I think there's arguably a lot of it from the consumer front as well i think when it comes to music unlike um say film people like as, as I've said with Netflix, people are also quite content with not actually owning the thing, but just having a service. Yeah. But the thing is with music, people like to actually own the thing. And, you know, like some people were too late, like there were too like my granddad stores, like everything. His living room is full of laser discs and VHS and DVDs. And oh, Lord. And you know the kind, right? Yeah. But like with music, people are more like that in general. Mm. Like people will quite people would prefer to a, buy music than just stream it through Spotify a lot of the time, I think. And that's why stuff like iTunes can still exist because mm. people like owning music um, because the people you know uh, uh, and I think that's not just that's partially just due to what people like but also because aspiring musicians a lot of the time especially like nowadays well I suppose not especially nowadays but like people like there's always been like people like DJs who like to own music because you know you need it for your job you know, yeah. there, there, are, there are so many amateurs that you know need that for their, for their own business, and uh, nowadays, like a lot of musicians, like sample and stuff. And well, that's always been the case, but mm. it feels, especially basically as technology takes over in, in music, like granted, you can sample from all sorts of things, um, but mm. you know, it helps if you've got resources at hand that are yours that you've paid for. Yeah. Um, of course. And, you know, I suppose that's why, like, you can't do that with TV because, like, the the only equipment I can think of is like YouTube coupon, as if anyone pays for material, they make those with it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and also clip shows. Deal. So, in music is likely to go in a different direction to the rest of the things, to the other stuff in that sense, I guess. Mm. I mean, when it comes to uh, samples and things like that, I think it's very much whether or not the sample gets used well. It really does. Because more things don't use them properly. Yeah, I mean, um, I can't remember who sang it, but um, you know, uh, I think it's Salt and Pepper, possibly. Well, um, I think the biggest, the best sampling that has ever been done, really, has mm. got to be the classic Leonard Nimoy's dubstep debut. Uh, in box step. You invented that thing. Yeah, well, yeah they just threw it into the, through, through, uh, into the world machine on the internet, and on the whole, it made something that wasn't entirely unlistenable by some freakish chance. Yeah. But <laughs> that absolutely is the worst thing that, that has ever been made musically. I'm sure. But, but oh no, I've heard worse. No, the about is full of talent. Is only Nicki Minaj. Uh, no, I've heard worse. I've heard much worse. I mean, I've seen Black Dahlia murder live. Fuck's sake. I've seen Prince Seven live. Black Dahlia murder is measurably worse yeah. by an order of magnitude. <laughs> I've seen Job for a Cowboy live. I've That's seen crazy. some shitty bands. I don't have a problem with supports. Is it? You get some shit sometimes. Yeah. Well, of, of course, I I didn't go see Job for a Cowboy by choice. Not brain damaged. You are now. Um. Anyway. <laughs> um. But no. Genuinely, really great sampling is um. What a man. Um. You know, it's, uh, the chorus just goes. What a man. What a man. Man. What a money, money man. That's. I want to match that up with a one. I want to make a man out of you from Mulan. Oh God. That. I want. <laughs> that might um, actually work quite well. 
but just makes me think of like how I started listening to Vaporwave slightly recently. I know, listen to Vaporwave in 2016. <laughs> but um, the current year, <laughs> current year plus argument. Oh, <laughs> um, but uh, I don't yeah. even know what Vaporwave is. Does it's anyone? All things, nothing else. Well, yeah, a lot of the time it's, it involves like, most of the time just generally it seems to be something old things. But you know, I mean, and uh, to greater or less degrees of success based on taste or you know just straight up being bad all the time but mm. um it's that has encouraged a huge amount of like sampling just generally i think i think the thing with sampling is like it can be done amazingly well by people who know what they're doing mm. right? it can be done amazingly well by people who are just starting out and just trying to find their feet and just happen to you know found that as a good way to start yeah. i mean like i think i think the fact, the fact that like um i say i I talk about Vaporwave, and I think, like, clearly there are a lot of plants and people who are done using it, and I think, and, you know, anyway, maybe, maybe, I don't know enough about it to actually say whether or not it's worth anything that's in right, but I think it's a good way, for, sampling, in a way, can be a good way for people to start getting a footing for how composition works and stuff, because yeah. it, it's like, um, some of the stuff is done for you, then it's a matter of putting things together, mm. I guess, and um, that's why, probably, it's always been a big thing, and it continues to be a big thing, and now it's just even easier to do than it ever was. Of course, it can also be a quick way to a lawsuit. That's true. If you're <laughs> CNC factory. Oh, uh, that's the thing that happened this year. The guy, the, um, what's his name? Got sued for uh, not Robin Thick, but the guy, the, one of the guys who was with him uh, on the whole. Um, 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 you know, really Ti. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm going to get sued now. Bank that out of the podcast. Bank that out of the podcast. I'm going to get sued. You know, um, that annoying Robin Thicke song. You know the one. Um, um, yeah, not... Uh, no, it was some um, Blurred Lines. It was Blurred Lines, that's the one. Yeah. Um, the guy who was with him on it, who... Uh, I'm sorry, the name The name of this guy is just escaping all of a sudden. The guy Farrell, did, Williams. Guy, Farrell Williams, that's the guy. He got sued to shit out yeah. this year. Yeah. I didn't realise Pharrell got... I think all three of the people involved got Pharrell sued. Pharrell got sued the hardest, I think. Yeah. I, don't know. I think he was more directly involved in the composition or something. Possibly, um, I wouldn't like to say. But, yeah, that I when I found out about that, it's sort of like, Jesus! He got fucked hard for that. And, yeah. you know... I mean, the thing is, it's all those two reasons to go, well, it's blood lines, they deserve it. <laughs> but, you know, like, it's, it's all... like, at the same time, it's a pretty simple song. Yeah. Really. It's, it, it, feel, it feels to me like um, all those dumb keyboard cat things and all that, and things <laughs> like that over the years, like, or the kind of thing you would have heard on BobGood.com or yeah. Weeble stuff. You know, it's, it's a simple little song that, that works. Yeah. It's not, not an overly complex composition. How is anyone going to co- call you out on that? I mean, you I mean, might as well have the whole... Um, you know the four chords. Uh, oh yeah. Sure. You might as well have all of the four chord songs writers sue each other. <laughs> You're gonna get. But so someone's dead. We're getting <laughs> sued. Dead. Well, the estates oh, yeah, then. Really. What about like Bacchabell's Canon or um, yeah. Canon in D and things like that? If, it, if all the people who who incorporated that into their songs got sued, there would be like a huge chunk of the music industry missing. It, w- it yeah. would basically end up like this black hole of exactly. litigation. Like, some, things just, some things just do crop up more than others. Yeah, and, and, um, and you just I, think... I, I thought, like, as easy... At the time, I remember I was, like, really pleased because, like, yeah, fuck that lines. I find that sort of really annoying mm. and just definitely uncomfortable. I mean, like, I mean, I'm not one to go, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm triggered by this. And feel upset because you know I, I I don't really have a deal with that. But, the, but the, it just has like, a bit of a squicky feel to it. It is the sleaziest thing. Yeah. But like the the thing is, I shouldn't be going against it for that because you know it's, as a song, it isn't actually hurting anyone. I don't mm. think, in my opinion, I think it's a repulsive song. But I don't think that's any reason to go. You know, yeah. they got sued. Well, they the only good. thing that's wrong with it is the lyrics, anyway. Well, yeah, that's well, yeah. Nothing else is offensive. I know it sounds like a porno to me. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like the sort of thing that would turn up on Skinamax. I'm just thinking it would just be covered by Von Jeremy. <laughs> well, which is well, just going up to join the revolution. Well, <laughs> well, Ron Jeremy did cover um, Wrecking Ball. <laughs> oh, that is I need to get the Just, just say. That sounds amazing. 
it, it is and one fall. of it's one of those what the Ron Jeremy please tell me please tell me he did the video as well yes he, <laughs> yes. he did it in the full get up and everything <laughs> wow so it's like one of the most perfect things ever created by man yeah, I'll put a link to it in the <laughs> description because it's just one of those what am I watching yeah uh, I think my face just went up yeah, I, I'm feeling a bit actually confused as to where we, I'm disorientated now. It's like, where are we? I don't even we're on, know. We're in the we're in the, the Ron Jeremy abyss. <laughs> we can't find our way out. What else is new? And I thought the only way we're, we're in the shadow. We're in the shadow of the girth. <laughs> what was that? The, walk, do I walk in the shadow of the valley of girth? <laughs> the fellows of girth. <laughs> <laughs> That's a creepy first. <laughs> oh yeah, because we were talking about bird lines and so we were talking about copyright and sampling. Yeah, that's where we were. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, just a brief tangent. Yeah, you know um, CNC Music Factory's uh, Everybody Dance Now? Yeah. Um, you know whose voice that was? Oh? It was one of the Weather Girls. Yeah, <laughs> Nice. And um, in the video, it's this really super thin model type who is sort of, wait, why is she the one singing? Why isn't it the weather girl who's... And this happened quite a few times, um, like uh, the I've Got the Power. That was another sample of hers. And it, eventually, because she wasn't getting credited, she sued the fuck out of the industry. And bearing in mind, this was right after the whole Millie Vanilli debacle, where they were sort of sampling and um, they weren't doing any of the actual singing or anything like that. So you can imagine it's sort of like, oh shit, she's suing us, we better give her a settlement as soon as possible. A settlement and a lot of groveling. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's rather strange when you consider those sorts of precedents. What's happened in recent years, and this year is no exception for that sort of thing. I mean, I I don't I dread to think what sort of. I know there's been defamation claims made over recent years and things like that. Oh, like uh, Lindsay Lohan. Um, suing for defamation of character and things like that because of certain lyrics bringing her up as being a crack whore and things like that what like was it a diss song or something i i'm not sure if it was a diss song i think it was just her name happened to be incurred ah uh, right well yeah because i mean the thing is i think i doubt i think it's, I, I get weirded out i feel like if someone's going to pull the combination for that i'm surprised like this whole diss song thing exists maybe i'm just, I'm just out of touch, probably, because I just don't know enough about it. But I feel mm. that so many of these, sometimes the people we go after, I feel like, why don't they just sue them for this? Yeah. But at the same time... Like, or is that just breaking rapper K, babe? Well, at the same time, you're sort of like, well, that clearly shows one of two things. Either they're making shit up about you, and you look like a fool because you don't have the balls to make up shit about them... Or, or what they're like, saying is actually about it would confirm what they're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. I hadn't really thought about it that way, but that makes sense. Very Cameron situation. Sorry. Uh, it, it, that is exactly the very Cameron situation. Yeah. yeah. I don't have to. I don't have. I'm not going to justify these stupid allegations that I that I fucked a pig. Moments later, I can categorically say I did not fuck that pig. <laughs> well done, David Cameron. You just proved you did. Oh <laughs> dear. <laughs> But try to avoid the politics cast for now. Otherwise, we'll be I here know, all but, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it is the country. Mm. Uh, actually, it's quite surprising there haven't been any pig fucking songs this year. So Squaw haven't taken up that stuff again. They would it before. Yeah. Well, that. Well, I, I suppose it would kind of. Although, actually, it did hit international stage hilariously. Of course it yeah, did. It because. It's such a thing that you can't really ignore it no matter what country you're from. Yeah, but it, it's just surprising that you didn't have Guar or something just do a specially dedicated version of fucking an animal. There is still time. 
I don't know, it would be a bit passe at this point, wouldn't it? I don't think it's the kind of thing that will ever go away. I think I will continue to be entertained, entertained by it for eternity. The guy's going to be an old man, and people are still going to be shouting at him. People are just going to be sending geriatric like, livestock over to his house. <laughs> <laughs> sending him copies of a very specific movie. g -Pil. No, there is a movie that <laughs> is... Pig, I'd like to... No... There's a. I don't think we can. I'd like to introduce you to the Sonic fandom. Uh, there is a movie that is nicknamed the Pig Fucking Movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, you would have heard about it because of watching Brows Held High. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's basic. Isn't it something like it turns out that it's meant to be post-apocalyptic set, and that's why he's able to fuck the pig or something like that. Like, That's a requirement now. <laughs> no, it, it's basically a case of um, because there's no regulations or laws to prevent him from doing so. It's sort of like eh, there's no one about. There's this pig that has piglets, and they're not horrible Cthulhuid abominations. They're just piglets. <laughs> you would have thought that they would have gone full. You know, we've already gone with the pig fucking and the piglets. We might as well make them horrible abominations of nature. I have not oh, seen this movie, for the record. Okay, whatever. Uh, I think that I think that concludes our little pig gate segment. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, we have a pig, pig call, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>